In this quick screencast I want to show how easily AngularJS can integrate with Java EE 7 on the back end. So here is my back end application, customer back end in Java EE 7 using Maven. We now have a starting point for creating a Java EE 7 application with Maven. Let's connect to our database and generate from it REST for Web Services. What you also need are JPA Entity Classes which will also be generated via this same wizard that we are now going through. So for the three tables we have selected, we wanted the customer table, we want to look at the customer, but it has relationships with other tables. So they have been automatically included and for those three tables three classes will be generated and if those classes already existed they would be updated with new information from the database but they don't already exist so they're being created for the first time and as well EJBs and web services will be created now. What we also need to include is support for cross-origin resource sharing so we're going to connect to our RESTful resource from a different domain to do that, we need to include the filter for that. So here it is. Gets and puts uh, and, and posts and deletes can now be performed on our resource. Our RESTful resource um, is based on a customer JPA entity class, which we see here. And we can fine tune it if you want directly inside the queries by using a code completion which gives us access to the actual SQL query from the database and we have our customer EJB which we know we have because there's a stateless annotation but there's also a path annotation making this a RESTful web service and we can see that we've been given this path and it's a little bit long and clunky so we're going to change this to customers we can also see that before customers we need to include web resources on the application path and when we use customers we will get to the find all method because this is the one method that doesn't have its own path so for the other methods we need to provide some additional information the ID for example um, but for this particular one we don't um, we simply want to get all of the customers which can either be presented in XML or in JSON. So let's go into the project properties and change the relative URL to include web resources and customers. We're going to deploy to the internal WebKit browser which is kind of convenient for screencasts because we don't need to switch to a different application. And here we see the payload displayed as XML inside of the browser. And this is information we will need when connecting to it from our front end, which we will begin creating immediately. Our back end is completely done, zero coding, as you might have noticed. So let's create our front end HTML5 application, customer front front end, click next, we say that we want to use AngularJS seed which is a really nice template to get started with, gives you a very nice structure and that is our basis for our application. Move the output into that space over there and slightly reset everything there we are okay so let's get started immediately and deploy this application also to the embedded browser and here we see it I'm going to switch to um, into NetBeans inspect mode because most of this we don't actually need but we don't know where it is actually defined so we're going to just jump from there and this is kind of convenient, so where is that defined? Okay, this comes from there, and we will just delete that stuff too. 
So this comes from a partial file, and here is the partial file, and we'll delete this as well. Okay, so now we begin. Um, we look inside the JavaScript folder, and we find our services folder. Okay, we need to do a little bit of research before we begin doing our coding. What we see here is the Angular JS org documentation on ng resource. The ng resource module provides interaction support with RESTful services via the resource service. And we read on. The requirements are to use it. We need to include Angular resource and Angular JS, of course, and description on the various parts of it are found in here. So we're back inside of the IDE and we start doing our coding. So we say cust uh, var customer services. So make a, a var of this so that we can refer to it and delete this, which is some um, boilerplate that we don't actually need. Oh, it's really an example. Um, so let's create our own starting point. So here we have included the ng resource module that we just referred to from the documentation. So now that we have that, the problem that we're going to see is in the output window, if we save this, is you see it fails, and that's because we haven't included the JavaScript inside of the index file. So the AngularJSC doesn't include it by default, which makes sense because you don't always need it, um, but we need to include it now. So here is Angular resource. So now you can see we save, and now there's no problem. So it's convenient to have the browser log available as you work on these kinds of things. There we go. So now we can start using it. So we use a factory because we are interested in a value being returned and um, not in working with the method which we would get back from um, a service. So if we were to say customer services dot service, we would get a function back that we can do something with, but we're going to instead want a value back. Um, okay, so we say, we call this uh, factory customers, and then we create a new function, which doesn't have a name, and here we pass in this resource that was just referred to in the documentation, end with a semicolon. Uh, in here, we say return um, return resource again, and then in here we put the full path to our service, which is right here. There it is, and then we throw in an empty one of these that we don't need to do anything with right now. And we finish off with a um, query. So the query is going to first of all specify the method that we're interested in and of course nicely in JSON method get and also is array so that we're working with an array we need to specify that and we're actually done uh, delete the rest of this and now we can use this in our controller so we have this um, as a as a factory we can refer to it from wherever we like it's a generic um, utility type method, it's a singleton, we can use it where we need it and the place where we need it right now is in the controller. So this is the controller for our partial and we know that because we can see in the app file that there are route providers and for partial one the HTML file we're working in the controller is my control one so this is the controller for our partial page Okay, so we begin when we say scope, which we get from the function. So we work within a particular scope always in Angular. Scope, 
and then we say all customers this is just a, a variable that we're creating here equals and not only do we pass in here do we specify scope but also customers now this matches the name of our factory so we get an error here because I saved this but um, so here name of our factory is customers so here we say customers dot query quotation mark save and there's no problem at all so this is all we need to do um, so now we have all the customers so query is done um, when we call the um, when we call our function and we have defined a variable called all customers which does the query and which returns all of the customers um, okay so that's it and now we can go into a partial and we create an unordered list and in here we stick a repeat just about the coolest thing in uh, in angular so we say one customer in all customers so this is again our page i'm just going to open it so right now we see nothing and one customer in all customers you can see here we get all the we get for each of them we get a first well that doesn't make much sense so we want more likely one customer and then a column so we know what our columns are you can actually see our columns right there so one customer name for example so here are all our customer names now how much coding did we do not very much um, so here is one customer name and maybe we want some other information here uh, one customer city okay that's kind of nice starting point but let's now create a table and do something with this information in a table so tab and then tab and here we have a table okay so what what are we going to do in this table so we'll first say we want to work with name and city it's nice to be able to work directly in HTML um, and then we will move this ng repeat guy and stick that guy into our TR here so there will be an, a new row for each of our customers I'm going to just comment this out so here so we have that and in here let's say um, one customer name okay so here are the customers and we'll add another one of these and we'll say city so let's make it look a bit more like a table and add a border border equals one now what else can we do that's cool uh, one thing is we can use the ng class the ng class allows you to set CSS class on HTML element dynamically okay so this even an odd as well it works in conjunction with ng repeat and takes effect only on odd or even rows so here's even and here is odd so we we'll say odd for this guy and we say even for this guy and then we'll open our style sheet so you can see here app CSS and in here there's already some stuff so we'll just delete it all and we're going to add our own CSS classes so what is odd going to be background color yellow for example so, for, uh, for all the odd rows, the background color is yellow. Maybe I'll make it a bit less uh, glaring, like aqua. And what about even? So I'll copy this down. Even is going to be something else, not the same. But that. So, 
the next thing um, let's say that the TR what they have is a cursor which is a pointer so the user can click on these now what happens when they click on them is what we can determine via ng click ng click and what is ng click for ng click allows you to specify custom behavior when the element is clicked so what is the custom behavior going to be select or uh, show selected element and we pass in our one customer now the show selected element has to be defined inside of our controller so here we have our controller and we have here a function and the function receives our object which we'll call um, C and what we're going to do now is we're going to create here a new variable selected which is um, the name of the selected um, customer so let's then go into our partial again and we don't care about all of this and now we can say selected item and then say selected selected item so here's the name of the company so now we can style this however we like of course using just HTML and what might be nicer is if instead of that or a different approach instead of that would be to say that selected is C and that in our HTML we can decide what we want to do with the selected so here it could be city that we're interested in um, so now we actually have more information about our our object available not just the name but anything we like and finally of course um, since it's so easy to do let's also add a um, a filter input type equals text and ng model is a customer filter so there it is and put some information to tell the user what this is filter and this customer filter we are now able to use inside the ng repeat by saying filter in front of it and so now I type something and you can see that I can filter down that table and of course that it remains um, odd and even colored the way I had defined okay it's not a CRUD application but it's definitely pretty cool how little code was needed to get up and running with um, creating a AngularJS front end on top of a Java E7 back end.